The first major shoe has fallen of NBA trade season as the Toronto Raptors and New York Knicks have agreed upon a trade to send OG and Anobi to the East Coast and join the Knicks. I'm here to break down why this is an issue for the Sixers, how much of a missed opportunity this is, and what the full options are from here for Philadelphia. Now, I want to start off with the initial report from Woj, which we got earlier today, which just said the Toronto Raptors are finalizing a trade to send OG Ananobi to the New York Knicks for a package including R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and draft considerations, sources tell ESPN. So there was a couple details leaking out. Precious Achua also included in the deal. And to give the full breakdown of what the deal is, how now we have the Knicks getting OG Ananobi and Precious Achua, the Raptors getting R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and a second-round pick. So to start with just gut reactions of that deal, I kind of like this deal from both sides when I talk about this trade specifically, that for the Knicks, that neither R.J. Barrett nor Emmanuel quickly were a part of their long-term future. That I think R.J. Barrett is a little bit overpaid, not quite good enough for his expectations, and he'll get a bit of a reset button in Toronto, where he's from in Canada, as well as Emmanuel quickly is a guy that I believe in on a significant amount as a talent, but there was always a ceiling in what his impact could be in New York because of Jalen Brunson being in front of him. That even in the success that he's had this season, it's only short bursts off the bench where he's able to change a game. In Toronto, he's going to have a longer leash. He's going to be able to do his thing, have an opportunity, and play through the growing pains in a way which would not have been the case in New York. And then from the Raptors' side of things, it is a little frustrating giving up OG Ananobi for this price tag considering there were reports last year of them receiving offers with three first-round picks, things like that. So I don't think it was the most bang for the buck that they could have got for OG, but obviously he's going to be a free agent this summer. And one of the things that Woj alluded to in this report is this will give the Knicks a head start on negotiating a long-term deal, but not necessarily mean that he is there for the long term. So that is a risk, and that is why the price tag was not as high as you would think for a player like OG. And on the other side of things, I like how the Knicks continue to build up this infrastructure, that they still are missing this superstar talent, but it feels like they're building up all the right pieces around him, that I do believe in OG to be a successful complementary piece on a winning team. I know that he wants a little bit bigger of a role, and we will see how things shake out. We will see what he looks like in a new system, because I do think that there were the overlapping strengths and weaknesses with Scotty Barnes and with Pascal Siakam, that there's a little more complementary role in New York. And then Jalen Brunson, another guy who's just purely a winner. That yes, they still need this superstar superstar. It's absolutely not Julius Randle, but it feels like that the the roster is being constructed properly around him and they're just getting that missing piece. Now, from the Sixers perspective, this is a little frustrating. That you look at a price tag like this, RJ Barrett, Emmanuel quickly, and a second round pick. And you have to think that the Sixers could have contended with that. Now, there is no Emmanuel quickly on this roster. And I do think that is the biggest difference maker. That, yes, there's Tyrese Maxey. But Tyrese Maxey is a significantly more valued piece than Emmanuel quickly. And, frankly, the Sixers should have no business even considering trading him for OG Ananobi. That those scales would tip the opposite direction. And I believe, especially when you can t- take into fact the contract issue and things like that, that the Raptors would have to give up additional assets and make it work. Plus, the finances would be a disaster. The bottom line... Tyrese Maxey will not be traded from the Sixers team, nor should they even consider that. But I did believe that OG Ananobi could have been the missing piece on the Sixers team. That was the guy that I had circled as the primary target, the number one piece. And the reasoning for that has always been that it's very clear the Sixers team has its two stars. Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey are the guys. You now have to fill in the rest with complimentary pieces around him. Having OG as a two-way piece, a guy that can guard other wings, opposing wings like Jason Tatum, that would be incredibly appealing to me. But the bottom line is it did not happen. And one of the biggest reasons why, which I have not seen get enough buzz, shout out to Tyrone Johnson of 97.5 here. Uh, But he tweeted, we do know that Maury can't really make a move for two days, right? January 1st is when all the guys the Sixers got in the Harden deal are movable. They couldn't even bid on OG yet. Now, I thought that date was January 15th. I'm going to have to double check that. But the point still being that they did not, they weren't able to get a horse in this race, that they weren't able to put their offer. And yes, it could have been a Tobias Harris conversation. You can make these opportunities. But when you're kind of looking at things, I would be more than comfortable of tossing in more draft assets than the Knicks did in this deal. I would even like two first round picks. But then we get back to the point where I think Emmanuel quickly was valued that highly from the Raptors. And you can absolutely believe in why that is the case, that there's a real chance that this guy becomes a budding star on the in Toronto now. So good for him and good for them to get a potential cornerstone piece. We will ultimately see what his strengths and weaknesses are. We've seen this massive growth from Tyrese Maxey here in Philadelphia. Maxey and Quickly, obviously college teammates at Kentucky, share a lot of similarities in their game. They both have a similar joy in the way that they play and just impact on the floor as a whole. But the bottom line being that the Sixers weren't unable to step up to the plate in the same way as these teams 
due to that. And the other reason behind that is patience can be both a strength and weakness of Daryl Morey. That I love that he plays his cards close to the vest, but there is a point where you have to go in and make a deal. And he clearly did not feel OG Ananobi was that guy. Now, the reason for that, I still believe, is because he's in the evaluation period of his mind. That we're coming off a win last night against the Rockets, the Sixers are, one of the better wins of the entire season. 131 to 127 was the final. 42 points from Tyrese Maxey in what felt like just another day at the office. He got a, got to the line a career-high 15 points. But beyond that is the pieces that I want to talk about. Tobias Harris last night, 22 points, 7 assists, 4 steals, and 3 blocks. He did an impressive job uh, penetrating, kicking out to others, making his impact felt, and defensively, he was awesome. He was active in passing lanes. He was getting his hands everywhere. That is not the type of effort that we see from Tobias that regularly, so it is important to highlight, and if he plays like that, then what's the point of giving up the farm to get a guy like OG Ananobi? Now, I don't think that is here to stay. We've seen the ups and downs of Tobias. We know this cycle. But the point being that when you look beyond that, look at these guys like Robert Covington off the bench in 16 minutes with seven points, four rebounds, and three steals. His hands were everywhere. Marcus Morris hit a dagger three-pointer, which ultimately essentially sealed the deal for the Sixers. He had 14 points, five rebounds, shot four of eight from the field, two of five from three. He also went with, Nick Nurse went with Marcus Morris as the small ball five for pretty much the entire second half in that matchup. Mo Bamba didn't get any minutes, and he pulled Paul Reed pretty early. It, that feels relevant to me, that the backup center position has unfortunately become a position of concern for the Sixers once again. To bring up the elephant in the room, there has been some Paul Reed regression this year, and Mo Bamba has been very up and down in his tenure. Him going with Marcus Morris as the small ball five was pretty telling to me, and that is something that this is now Morris playing himself into a role. That the way he's shooting the ball, the way that he's playing, he's making plays for this Sixers team. And there was two plays, two plays specifically that stood out to me in that matchup. Number one, of course, was the dagger three pointer, which led to Patrick Beverly immediately getting in Fred Van Fleet's face and talking trash. And it was very much a signature moment for that win and for that game. But then prior to that, there was a play where Morris got an offensive board and then just out-muscled Shingun, put it back up, and had a bucket and won. And that was a moment where it's like, okay, this guy is earning a real opportunity here. He is earning his role. And Marcus Morris specifically has been a guy that I was very down on from the beginning of the trade, that I believed his best years behind him, that he was pretty cooked as a player, did not have much left in the tank, and he is straight up proving me wrong. Hand up, I'll be the first to admit it, and I'm happy that that is the case. I'm glad to see Marcus Morris succeeding. It's very clear that he's happy to be in Philadelphia, that he is a Philadelphia kid, grew up here in North Philly, all these things. This is a hometown hero, and he's just seizing his moment. He's giving this team real deal positive minutes, and if this continues, how do you move on from a guy like that? But the question for the Sixers is still, what is the pathway to the championship? So evaluating which of these players can help on that path and which ones are kind of expendable and what are better suited being flipped in a trade is still a question that Daryl Warren needs to answer. So I think it's frustrating that the timeline of this specific deal for OG happened so quickly, that I think the Sixers would much le- much rather and will be much more active at the trade deadline, letting things stretch out. But now they have to turn their attention to other opportunities. Now, there was one line in this report by Woj that I did want to bring up here. And it is this quote that says, Toronto is expected to continue to explore trades involving forward Pascal Siakam, but there are no deals with traction now, sources said. Both Siakam and Anobi could be free agents this summer. So that was a telling part of the article for me. For starters, it's the right decision by the Raptors to hit the reset button to figure things out that you're beginning to develop the next generation of the core with Scotty Barnes, with uh, Emmanuel quickly. But Pascal Siakam, you got to move on from him too. So that is a piece that is interesting from the Sixers' perspective. Frankly, I've pounded the table being preferring OG from a fit standpoint. There's no doubt Pascal Siakam is the better overall basketball player than OG, but just on what the Sixers' roster needs, I trended to lean toward Ananobi because of the way that he plays, the styles of his game, and all those things. Siakam, I think, is a little bit stranger of a fit. He's very like Tobias Harris-like to some extent in the way that he operates in the mid-range. He's better than Tobias Harris, absolutely. Raptors fans, you don't got to attack me for that one. Uh, but I have called him Tobias Harris with a permanent uh, green light on many occasions. I, I, I'm I not as high on Siakam as I think the natural consensus, and especially when you talk about that he could be a free agent as well, that you have to really know he's the missing piece. Who knows, maybe the price tag comes down to a point. But then you look around the league at other options. Laurie Markin is a name that has not got enough buzz to me. 
the price tag is going to be steep on that one, but it should be because he's that talented. But this is a guy that's a real deal creator. He can put the ball on the floor. He can shoot the lights out as a catch and shooter better defensively than he gets credit, specifically as a shot blocker. There's a lot to like about Laurie and the fact that he does not seem untouchable in Utah at this point is super appealing to me that I think the Sixers should be all over that if that is remotely a possibility. There's also been plenty of the DeMar DeRozan, Alex Caruso, Zach Levine mix from the, the Bulls. And by the way, that we are still at the point of the season where part of the evaluation process and part of the decision by Daryl Morey to continue waiting things out is because other teams are going to hit the panic button. Whether that means them needing to overpay for a player like Tobias Harris, or whether that means a player that could be very helpful to the Sixers becoming available on the market, those are all valuable things to Philadelphia, to sit back, be in the driver's seat, and figure things out from there. So I think that's what the spot where we're in. It's frustrating that the OG deal just went down. It's frustrating that he's pretty much a carbon copy of what the Sixers need, and he'll now be suiting up in New York, just a little bit up the uh, up the East Coast there. But the Sixers are still in a great spot. That They're off to their best record since the 2000-2001 season. They're coming off back-to-back wins without Joel Embiid on the floor. Joel Embiid set to return to this team soon. He will be missing tonight's game against the Chicago Bulls. Hopefully we'll be back in action for Tuesday's game when they return home. But that you can't be mad about the on-court product at this point. The assets are still in the cupboard, ready to strike when the time is right. And we ultimately got to live with the decision by Daryl Morey that OG Ananobi was not the right person to strike with. So I want to hear all your guys' thoughts in the comments as well. Let me know what you feel about the deal. How devastating do you think this is for the Sixers? How much was a missed opportunity is this? Had to tune in out here from work at Fox Sports in Philadelphia today. I was in on the radio. Had to jump in and squeeze into a side, ro- side room to make sure I got this out ASAP. So appreciate you guys for tuning tuning in make sure to smash that subscribe button drop a like and drop a comment let me know your thoughts and i'll be talking with you next time right here on sixers digest peace